This is the internet's official high intensity interval training versus low intensity steady state cardio video. I'm gonna give you the breakdown between HIT and LIST and help you understand which one is better for you and which one is better overall. So we have this constant competition going between the two and quite honestly, it's a little bit aggravating because to be fully transparent with you, I think anyone that's getting out there and getting active and starting to change their life for the better is doing something great. And we can't constantly discount people that are doing HIT or doing LIST. If they're out there and they're doing something and they're trying to get healthier, kudos to them. But let's break down the science, let's break down the research, and let's understand the physiology of what's actually happening in the body. The first one that I wanna look at is LIST, low intensity steady state cardio. This is the cardio that you know. This is the cardio that you're probably already familiar with. It's the kind that you did in PE class when you're running around the track. Low intensity steady state cardio is usually categorized by being in like a 50 to 65% of your maximum heart rate range, okay? Now what that means is that you're not at a very high intensity. You're at just enough to be breathing heavily, probably can carry on a conversation, maybe running on the treadmill, running around the track for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, up to two hours, whatever, okay? You're just running, you're getting activity going. It could be elliptical, it could be stationary bike. That's just low intensity steady state cardio. Now what ends up happening is during low intensity steady state cardio, you're burning more fat as a fuel source. It doesn't literally mean that you're burning more fat overall. It just means that your body burns fat as a fuel source. Now I've talked about this in other videos, but I'm trying to make this general because it's the internet's only hit versus list video. All right, when you are working in a lower capacity like that, you're working at a lower capacity, you're in a situation where your body can utilize fat as a fuel source. You see, how it works is when you're breathing oxygen, that oxygen comes in and oxygen combines with fat to create energy. But it can only do this at a low speed. Once you start going faster and you're not low intensity anymore, your body can't keep up. You see, it's a very slow process of breathing in air, extracting the oxygen, combining it with fat, and actually creating energy. Once you start excelling fast that and you start going into high intensity interval stuff, you're going into a whole different system because your body can't keep up. So it has to start using carbs instead of oxygen plus fat. We'll get to that in a second. So that's why advocates of the low intensity steady state cardio are always saying that LIS is better because they're saying, well, you're in this fat burning zone. You're in the fat burning zone that's allowing you to just use fat as a fuel source. If you've been to the gym and you've seen those little charts that they have, they say like aerobic zone, fat burning zone, high intensity zone, all that. That's exactly what they're talking about. So the cool thing is you burn more calories from fat. The hard part is because it's low intensity, the overall net calories that you're burning are significantly less because you're not working at a high intensity. So although the percentage of calories from fat are higher, the net calories are less. So now we get into talking about high intensity interval training. High intensity interval training is categorized as doing something like 10 to 60 second bursts and then allowing yourself to recover. Now I did another video on high intensity interval training talking about how you really need to be recovering all the way. That's a story for another day. Okay, basically you're doing sprints, then you're recovering. Then you're doing another short sprint, you're recovering. Again, it can be running, can be biking, can be elliptical, can be any of that. It's still just the kind of activity you're doing. The whole idea is you're trying to get yourself to like 80, 90, 95% of your maximum heart rate so that your body has no choice but to start using cars as a fuel source. And here's where the competition starts. The low intensity steady state cardio people compete with the HIT people because they say that HIT is bad because you're not activating fat, you're activating carbs. Well, what good does that do you? Well, that's not what matters here. With high intensity interval training, the magic comes from the central nervous system stimulation, your CNS. You're working your body so hard that you're triggering a metabolic response and kicking your body into this high state of recovery that takes calories later on. There's something known as post-exercise oxygen debt, okay? And basically it means after a hard workout, like high intensity interval training, you're in oxygen debt, okay? Your body has to take time and it has to recover to get your body back to homeostasis as far as energy reserves go. That takes energy. So the nice thing about high intensity interval training is you can have a short workout that allows you to still burn calories later on throughout the day because of the recovery. But here's the caveat, it's not sustainable. You can't always do HIT forever. It's hard on the body. It's a central nervous system crazy smorgasbord of just chaos. You can't recover from that day in and day out. 
And quite honestly, it comes back to the old theory of relativity. You're not taken into the grave with you. When you're dead, you're dead. So whether you wore out your body in short amounts of time doing high intensity interval training, or you bored yourself to death doing low intensity steady state cardio, the fact is, at the end of the day, it's all kind of relative. How quickly do you want to get there? What means do you want to use to get there? Et cetera, et cetera. The other thing that you have to look at with high intensity interval training is because you're stimulating the central nervous system, you're constantly putting stress on your glucocorticoids. You're putting stress on your adrenals. This could trigger more fat accumulation later on. Excess cortisol from the stress from HIT could make it so that you're releasing glucose into the system later on throughout the day that's contributing to overall abdominal fat. So now we have to get into how we look at the two of them. So there's one particular study that I thought was interesting. It took a look at HIT versus LIS and quite honestly ended up favoring HIT. But the study was a little bit odd because of how it looked at it. It took a look at subjects that were doing four intervals of four minute runs at 90% of their max heart rate. So pretty long intervals. But what they found was that there was a six to 15% increase in overall metabolism for a short period of time after the workout and ultimately resulting in more fat loss than the low intensity steady state. But what they didn't measure was the sustainability and how long they could do that. There are a lot of studies that show that although HIT is very effective at getting you quick fat loss gains, it plateaus very fast. Whereas low intensity steady state allows you to burn fat for longer periods of time, sometimes even over a lifetime. Again, it's kind of where it comes back down to relativity. So now I wanna do a comparison between the two and look at both. So now we go back to, again, the fact that HIT is gonna burn more calories throughout the course of the day, but since the recovery's not there, you can't do it as many times per week. Then we look at LIS, where LIS, you don't burn as many calories, but the calories that you do burn are allocated more so from fat calories. So just like with the HIT cardio, we burn out faster because we burn out our nervous system, well, LIS, we end up burning out over time because a lot of times we're doing repetitive motions. That's the biggest problem with LIS, in my opinion, is we're going out for a run. We don't think of LIS as heart rate. We think of LIS as just consistent running or consistent movement. So we go out for a run. We move the hip flexors in the same motion for two hours, and we wear down our hip flexors. Eventually, we beat ourselves up just like we would with HIT. Low intensity steady state cardio shouldn't always be just one motion. It should be throughout an entirety of different motions, and that's where the paradigm needs to shift. I'll come back to that in a second. Okay, then we have to remember what I just talked about when we talk about the HIT triggering that hormone response, okay, triggering stress and cortisol, and LIS being a little bit less on that, allowing to do it a little bit more often. So where does this leave us? Because right now, we're neck and neck, right? Well, here's my thoughts on it. High intensity interval training should replace weight training on specific days. So if it's a day where you're having a toss up between going to the gym and lifting weights or doing some cardio, you should do your HIT, okay? If you're having a day where you're specifically wanting to do some cardio, you should do your low intensity steady state. Treat your low intensity steady state as a recovery day, but don't be totally biased one way or the other. I'm a huge fan of doing HIT on a day where maybe I was gonna go in and do some kind of weight training, but I felt like I was just a little stiff and didn't wanna go through the range of motion. So I go and I do some HIT, and I feel like I got the same metabolic response that I would from weight training. And it's true, you're using the same energy substrates. You're using carbohydrates with HIT. you're using carbohydrates with weight training. So you're kind of just potato potato at that rate. But you can't substitute HIT for LIS because they're two totally different worlds. LIS should be on your recovery days. Okay, HIT is not gonna allow you recovery, period. You're doing the opposite. You're putting yourself into this hole of the lack of recovery. So if you're having a day where you want a day off to just do cardio, just do your dang cardio, go for a run, go for a jog, go on the bike, do something, enjoy it, embrace it. Don't let the hit people totally tell you it's wrong. But don't ever substitute a hit day for a list day because it's two totally different worlds. And that's what we honestly have to remember. Now my advice for you when you're doing low intensity workouts, low intensity cardio, is change it up. Don't just run. Go run for 10 minutes at that heart rate. Then hit the bike for 10 minutes then do the rowing machine for 10 minutes. You wanna change it up so you're not putting your muscles through the same repetitive motion. Otherwise, you're gonna run yourself into the ground the same way that you would with HIT. So at the end of the day, think of it as two totally different worlds, okay? HIT is weight training. Cardio is cardio. But cardio is also getting out and just enjoying life. So we can't say that one is bad or one is good. Two totally different worlds. And at the end of the day, just break down your routines that list is your recovery days and hit is still a training day. As always, keep it locked in here on my videos. If you have ideas for future videos on this topic or any kind of workout routines or anything like that, let me know in the comment section below.
I'll see you soon.